When I'm not at Starbucks, silently but fiercely judging anyone who orders a medium drink, I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube. So let's get to it. Thoughts on Metallica. I think Metallica is one of those bands that I respect a lot more than I actually actively listen to. I mean, you can make an argument that no band has made a bigger impact on their genre in the last like 40 years of music than those guys. And uh, honestly, like every time I listen to James Hatfield, like an interview or something like that, he just seems like a totally humble, cool dude. And I do like a lot of Metallica songs and I definitely checked out their new album that just came out and I thought it was pretty good and it's heavy, but, and it's like, it's super tight. Like it's, all the performances are incredibly tight. It's a really polished sounding album, but I almost kind of think it is too tight and too polished. And I kind of have the same thoughts on the newest Muse album. And again, they're one of my favorite bands ever where it sounds so good. It kind of loses a little bit of like the edge of what made them great. Like if you look back at older Metallica, it's kind of a little bit looser and it's just like, and it's more aggressive and it kind of, uh, it just feels heavier to me. And that's kind of like the same way I feel about older Muse stuff. But uh, those guys are absolute legends. There's really nothing, I, like you're definitely, absolutely not gonna hear me knock anybody in Metallica. I think uh, they get a lot of, they get a lot of crap from uh, kind of like elitist metal guys and stuff like that too, which I think is totally undeserved. I think they're an iconic band and I'm glad that they're still doing what they're doing. Uh, and they're still putting out good music. Again, I think the, the new one is definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. But uh, to me, I just kind of prefer their older stuff. Uh, but yeah, it just, it's all, it's all good, man. New subscriber here, working my way backwards through your videos. Do you have any originals? Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'm actually probably gonna release the newest one of the upcoming album tomorrow. And I'm actually really proud of it. I think it might be the best one on the entire album. So I definitely would love it uh, if you guys would check that out and give me some feedback. But uh, just a little bit more on the whole album in general. I wanted to get a few songs out ahead of time before I released the whole thing because as I've kind of mentioned in the past, I'm animating the entire thing as kind of like one thematic type story album thing, which is an incredibly daunting and taxing process. But uh, it's gonna be done soon. So I'm planning on releasing it the first of the new year. Uh, I'm not sure how I'll roll the whole thing out, but I definitely want to maybe, I might do one more kind of just music video of me just kind of like playing around or whatever. You're also going to see a return of the smiling drummer partially in the video coming out. So, uh, stay tuned for that. And I'm looking forward to releasing this album and being done with it. So definitely stay tuned. Sean, do you like and or listen to hip hop? So hip hop isn't necessarily my main genre, but I actually do listen to a good amount of it. And I think specifically lately, hip hop has become a lot more musical in my opinion. And I, that could be just a very ignorant thing to say uh, on my part, but I love the new Kendrick Lamar stuff, he, especially a couple of songs on the un, untitled, untitled one too. Uh, I think Thundercat and Flying Lotus are like awesome producers and just incredible, incredibly gifted musicians. And uh, the new Tribe Called Quest album is fantastic. Uh, top to bottom, that's really great. I urge you to check that out because musically there's some really cool guitar stuff going on in there too. And it's just like the flow of it is very, very old school hip hop, which I love. Uh, I'm also big fans of Outkast. And I think you can definitely hear a lot of their influence in the new Kendrick Lamar stuff and the new uh, Tribe stuff. In fact, Andre 3000 is actually on the Tribe Called Quest album, uh, one of the tracks too. So check that out uh, because it's just it just flows so great. It's great musically. The production is awesome. I think especially production wise, there's a lot that like any genre you can always learn stuff as far as like if you have any uh, kind of goals or ambitions to maybe uh, arrange music or make your own stuff. Uh, is there's a lot of value to hearing what what is going on in other genres. So yeah, I'm definitely a big hip hop fan. Do you think it's easier to write music for bands that only have guitar and drums? For example, the Black Pistol Fire, the Black Keys, and earlier albums, and Royal Blood. You know, this is really a fantastic question, and I actually don't think it's easier. I think it actually might be a little bit harder to rock something out in a two-piece because you have to keep the energy at like, you know, like a maximum level and your dynamics have to be so tight to really kind of take an audience on like a ride that is gonna be interesting with uh, that sparse of an arrangement. But just kind of like in a broader sense of arrangement in general, I don't think there's that much of a difference as far as the parts are concerned when it comes to great songwriting, in just my personal opinion. So what I mean by that, whether it's like, a two-piece or a three-piece or a four-piece or a five-piece or a 10-piece band, I think 
the relationship between melody and chord, chord changes is kind of the same difficulty level when writing, when you just want to keep something interesting and keep something fresh and be creative in different ways. So unless you're like arranging something for like a symphony or an orchestra, I think the, the parts of what goes into good songwriting doesn't really matter as much as just kind of like the writing in general. Like you could take any, you know, White Stripes or Black Keys song and a good arranger could come up with like a bass part or come up with like a string section or a piano part or something like that. The core of what I think makes a song good or interesting is just kind of like those chord changes and just kind of like the melody on top of it and just how it's used. So like the bands that you've mentioned, like Royal Blood, uh, Black Keys, like those guys are just master arrangers. And I think like Dan Arbach especially uh, is, is so good at just kind of like finding like finding what a song is and then kind of like bringing it to life and kind of like bringing like a whole pattern around because he does a lot of production too. Like he did uh, Ray LaMontagne's album. Uh, he's in stuff with like Lana Del Rey. And then there's like, uh, you know, his side projects and stuff too. So I, all those guys are definitely super talented. And whether it's like a two piece or a three piece or a four piece, it doesn't really matter if the song is good. I think that's the difficulty in writing as compared to kind of filling out the individual parts. What do you think of classical guitarists? I'm kind of starting to feel like all they do is perform pieces composed by others without any slight bit of creativity. I'm starting to even not see them as musicians, but more as performers since all they do is memorize pieces and play them. So is there really any reason why classical guitarists are seen as more skilled than other genre players? You know, I think there actually is a lot of truth in this point of view, but I think it can also be something that's like really misunderstood kind of like defining like a classical player, not even just a guitarist, but just like a classical player, whether it be like a viola player, violin player, cello player, like a horn player, something like that, and, and their role and what they're asked to do. Because I've had a lot of experience uh, with classical players of all types of instruments, and I think what, what he's saying is a, kind of a stereotype that in my experience has been accurate, where they're more concerned about the performance because all their training has been to just kind of get like the best tone possible from their instrument to replicate maybe something somebody else has written. And in a lot of ways, that can be a big deterrent to being creative. Like I've tried to kind of jam with some classical musicians and it can be hard for them. And again, by no means is that a rule. Like there are incredible classical players, guitarists and otherwise, that are the most creative people you'll ever meet. But I do think that there is something to the training and for the goal that they have that maybe skews off of creativity and more of just like putting in like an incredible performance with like an otherworldly tone. So I wouldn't say that doesn't make them musicians. Uh, it just really depends on how you want to define it. I mean, I think one of the reasons that they're, that they're seen as more skilled is because to be one of the real deal, like to play in like a pit or something like that or an orchestra, like you've got to really know your stuff. I think like there are a lot of guys who can maybe, you know, just kind of plunk around on a guitar and be in a rock band and that's cool, but there's no way you can fake being in like an orchestra. So those guys have to practice their asses off and to that I respect them infinitely. So I think because of that is maybe why a lot of circles see them as maybe more legitimate musicians, which is something I don't always totally agree with, but... It's just, again, how you want to define a musician. To, to me, creativity is a huge part of being a good musician, but not all people see it that way. And again, kind of like just how a really well-versed classical musician can pick up a piece of music, no matter what genre, and be able to rock it out. Sometimes sight unseen, just doing it, is an incredible skill set to which I don't have, and I respect those guys tremendously. But there is a lot of truth in my experience and the downside of that being they might not be able to like jam something out or be creative or maybe just uh, kind of come up with their own original comp compositions, but by no means does that make them any less of a musician. And the flip side of that too is if you don't read music and you don't consider yourself versatile and whatever, that doesn't make you any less of a musician. You know, if you do what you're doing and you do it well and you put the time and the passion and the energy into it, just because you can't like sit in a pit with like a bunch of other amazing musicians and, and kind of like have a place there, that doesn't make you know you any less legitimate of a musician anyways. It just depends on how you want to define it and what your own personal goals are. So for listening homework this week, I want to turn you on to my main man, Bonobo. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I have never actually heard another human being pronounce his name, but to me, this guy just puts out so much good work and he is so not well known in just kind of like the, the popular mainstream culture of music 
that uh, you got to check out this album, Black Sand, specifically the title track on it, because it is my absolute favorite instrumental album of all time. And he's got some new stuff coming out that I'm really looking forward to. But uh, in the meantime, definitely check that out. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments or Twitter or Instagram, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.